You're listening to the Journey Begun in Scripture podcast with your host, Theodore Jander, where he shares his passion for bringing hope to the world and transforming and enriching the daily and life journeys of all people through creative and meaningful devotionals, imagery, and music. May you be blessed. Hello, and welcome to the Journey Begun in Scripture podcast. I am your host, Theodore Jander. To begin this episode, looking for answers in all the wrong places, I share Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 15, which comes from the scripture passage my dad reflects on, Jeremiah 33, 14 to 16. In those days, and at that time, I will cause the branch of righteousness to sprout up unto David. He shall bring forth justice and righteousness on the earth. Now, sit back and relax as you take this time to dwell in God's presence as my dad, Dr. Lou Jander, reflects on looking for answers in all the wrong places. Good day to you, my friends. Welcome to this week's devotional reflection. First of all, blessed Thanksgiving. May your time of Thanksgiving bring a time of remembrance for all that God has done for you and to you. May it also be a time of hope and the promise and fulfillment of Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection. Sunday will mark the first Sunday in Advent, the beginning of a new church year. Today, I want to focus on the Old Testament reading for this first Sunday of Advent, found in Jeremiah 33, verses 14 to 16, entitled, Looking for Answers in All the Wrong Places. In 1980, a country song titled, Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places, was recorded by Johnny Lee. Ultimately, it was nominated for a Grammy in the area of country music. You might also remember the song from the movie Urban Cowboy. So, what are we looking for as we enter the Advent season? Advent means coming, preparation for something or someone's coming. It means anticipation. It means waiting. The countdown to Christmas is on, at least in most houses. It might have begun in November or possibly even earlier. The countdown to Christmas has been going on ever since God first made the promise to send a Savior to rescue the people from the punishment of sin. The clock started ticking as soon as God first made that promise to the first sinners, Adam and Eve. Christ is coming. As the countdown continued throughout the centuries, God continually reminded his people that Christ is coming. He sent prophets, like the prophet Jeremiah, who repeatedly echoed the call, Christ is coming. Why were those constant reminders necessary? Well, because like people today, they had very short spiritual attention spans. Some became distracted by all the different things they were convinced they had to get done, and they lost sight of God's promise. Other people, after waiting so long, doubted that God was ever even going to fulfill his promise. And still others, they just gave up completely and decided that the wait just wasn't worth it. Things were bad in Israel. Just listen to what the Lord said to Jeremiah. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the houses in this city and the royal palaces of Judah that have been torn down to be used against the siege ramps and the sword in the fight with the Babylonians. They will be filled with the dead bodies of the people I will slay in my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from this city because of all its wickedness. Jeremiah 3, 4, and 5. Things were really bad for Jeremiah and his fellow Jews. Just listen to what the Lord goes on to say to Jeremiah just a few verses later. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill 
the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah in those days. And at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. Those are the verses read for today. Do you hear that? Despite what Israel was like, the countdown to Christmas did not stop. From this seemingly lifeless stump of a nation, a branch was going to sprout, and not just any branch, a righteous branch. Yes, from this nation of Israel, from the family of King David, the promised Christ was going to come one day. Contrast that thought to what the Lord says in the reading really specified for today. The days are coming when I will fulfill my good promise. At that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout. He will do what is just and right in the land. I know we just read that before. Did you notice who is doing everything? It's the Lord. Why is Christ coming? It is not because people have been so nice or so good or have not been pouting or complaining. No. In fact, it's because people have not been good that Christ is coming. Christ is the righteous branch, the one who does what is just and right. Christ comes to give righteousness to those who have failed to do what is right. Christ comes to do what is just in the place of people who have not always made God-pleasing decisions throughout their lives. Christ comes to be perfect and right for people who are imperfect and have not done what is right. How many people do you know who are feeling insecure about their relationship with God or are uncertain of what is going to happen to them at the end of this life? Where are they looking for answers? How many people are banking on the religion of the man in the big red suit, hoping that they've been nice enough or good enough to be accepted by God? Friends, by God's grace, you and I know that a real and lasting safety exists with nothing to do with us, bigger than anyone else. You know the security that has everything to do with the righteous branch Jesus, who came just as God promised he would, to do everything right for you and to make you right with God and ready for heaven. So let the countdown to Christmas continue, because Christ's coming as that righteous branch of our salvation is worthy of our anticipation, our celebration, and our invitation to others to come and see this amazing thing that God has done. Join me in a few words of prayer. God of hope, be with us in our Advent journey to the stable and beyond. Be with us in our meeting and in our traveling together. Be with us in our worship and our praying together. Be with us in our Advent journey to the stable and beyond. Our God of hope, be with us as we anticipate and wait for the celebration of a birth above all births, a life above all lives, a death and resurrection that brings us the hope of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May your focus in these days of Advent be on the righteous branch, Jesus. Peace, my friends. Thank you for joining me in this Journey Begun in Scripture Crown Point Ministries episode, looking for answers in all the wrong places. May you be filled with the joy of God's love and righteousness in the coming week. Until next time, that is my Journey Begun in Scripture podcast, and I am sticking to it. Ciao for now and blessings.